Okay, so, the other day I stopped at Taco Bell and I got myself a Crunchwrap Supreme, you know, as one does. And I was thinking, I should do something with this. I got home and in my YouTube recommendations, I actually saw a video for Berea Tacos and that's it. That's how this video was born. Now, the actual Berea recipe is like 99% from Google Foods and just a splash of Joshua Weisman. Notice me. So I can't take full credit for that, but putting it into a Crunchwrap, that's my abomination. So without further ado, let's make some fourth meal. Start with a bunch of dried chilies, specifically five ancho chilies, five guajillo chilies, and five chili de arbo. Slice them open and scrape out all the seeds. Make sure you wash your hands after doing this or you're gonna touch something you shouldn't and you're gonna have a bad time. Next up, you wanna combine an entire bulb's worth of garlic cloves and a two-ish inch knob of ginger into a mortar and pestle and pulverize them into oblivion. A mortar and pestle is preferred here because the crushing actually releases more of the flavor than a knife does. It's okay if you don't have one though, just mince everything up really nicely. You gotta work with what you have. Now, look at this onion. This onion is massive. You don't need an onion of this caliber. I just bought it because it was so big. Take your probably smaller onion and give it a rough chop. It doesn't have to be anything close to perfect. Just chop it up and set it off to the side. Then do the same with your tomatoes. About two pounds worth to be not very exact. Roughly quarter them and save them for later. Now take your meat out and slap it on the table. And by your meat, I of course mean this two-ish pound chunk of chuck roast. Don't be a pervert. Slice it down into smaller pieces, then do the same with your slap of short ribs. Now let's get our spices ready. Combine one tablespoon of black peppercorns, one tablespoon of cumin, one tablespoon of oregano, three tablespoons of salt, and half of a, half of a, half of a stick of cinnamon. Now that our mise en place is out of the way, we can finally start cooking. Start by toasting the chilies in a pan with a little bit of oil over medium heat for a few minutes. This will help release the oils and make them really fragrant. Why am I doing this in a walk? Because it's the first pan I grabbed. Get off my case and set the chilies off to the side. In a large pot over medium high heat, add a little bit of oil and start searing your meat. You'll probably have to work in batches for this, but it's worth the effort. Invoking that Maillard reaction and developing that crust is really gonna up the flavor of everything. Now look at that gorgeous crust and try not to eat it yet. Don't eat all the meat yet. Stop it. Go back to your pan and throw the onions in. As they cook and begin to release their moisture, use a wooden spoon to scrape up all that delicious fond on the bottom. Let those go for a few minutes, then add the tomatoes. Give those a few minutes to cook down, and once the mixture starts looking almost kind of soupy, add the chilies. Make sure you mix them in really well so they can start hydrating as they cook. Then throw in your garlic and ginger mash. Allow everything to cook together for five or so minutes, then meet me outside with the blender. Okay, so uh, it's three in the morning, and um, I have to blend uh, this marinade but um, I don't want to wake my roommate up, and I don't think I will wake her up, but I'm pretty paranoid about it. So um, I'm in my backyard. I used the extension cable <laughs> and took the uh, blender outside um, so that our loudest blender doesn't uh, resonate through the entire house. And of course, all the houses are super close together and it is the quietest I have ever heard East Dayton at three in the morning. So <laughs> we'll see what happens here. Um, oh yeah, and I'm gonna have to do this in batches because uh, the blender's not big enough for the whole thing. So let's see how this works. That actually wasn't too bad. Um, okay, so I'm gonna do that again because I'm doing it twice. And then uh, back to the actual uh, production. Come back inside and don't forget the blender. Pour the puree back into the pot, dump the meat in there, and add a little bit of water, just enough to cover any of the meat that's poking out. Give it a good stir, bring everything to a boil, cover it, then drop it down to a simmer and let it go for about three hours while you play Hollow Knight. It's now 6 a.m. and you're removing all the meat and bones from the braise. Again, try not to eat it all right now. Maybe just a piece. Once it's all removed, strain all the liquid. This stuff is pretty thick, so double strain it if you can and use a rubber spatula to help push everything through. I actually ended up doing this a couple of times just to really get a smoothed out product. Now, this could be your final consomme, but we're gonna go a step further with it. More on that in a sec. For now, you wanna shred your meat. You can do this with a couple of forks or a cleaver, or you can lazily do it with a chef's knife because you're sleep deprived and beginning to think that pulling an all-nighter to make this was a bad idea. Throw the meat and the consomme in the fridge for a couple hours and go play more Hollow Knight. It's now 10 a.m. While the meat does benefit from being in the fridge, letting all those flavors intermingle similar to how chili does, the bigger reason why we refrigerated everything was to allow the fat to separate from the consomme. 
This rich, spicy red layer of pudge fudge should peel right off with a spoon. Save this, because we're gonna use it. Okay, so now it's time to make a tostada. If that looks like a flour tortilla, it's because I accidentally bought flour tortillas. Use corn. Add a little bit of the reserved fat to a hot skillet, dip the tortilla in the consomme, and griddle it on both sides until it gets nice and crispy. It's now a reasonable hour the next day. You've slept for at least 12 hours and you're retaking the final shots because the previous sleep deprived ones were subpar. Since building a crunch wrap that's been dipped in consomme is a sloppy mess, you're instead gonna spoon some onto the tortilla and spread it around. Now, place some strands of Oaxaca cheese in the center, followed by some of the meat. Place the tostada that's now made of corn, since you had time to go to the store, on top and spoon on a little bit more of the meat. Now this wouldn't be a supreme unless we threw the veggies on there, so layer on some lettuce, tomato, onion, and cilantro. Finally, put some more cheese on top. Now the tricky part is actually closing the thing, but it's actually not that tricky. Fold it from the bottom into the center, then work around, folding in each corner that developed from the last fold. Does that make sense? Just look at the video, okay? Once again, heat some fat into the skillet. You could definitely try dipping the whole crunch wrap into the consomme, but I opted to just pour some into the pan and immediately put the crunch wrap on it. Just make sure you do it folded side down first to seal it shut. Let that go for a minute, then pour some more consomme directly on top and flip it over. Give it another minute or so and we're about ready to eat. First thing you want to do is cut it in half to get a good look at that cross section, and then waste a couple minutes making stupid faces at it in an attempt to get a good thumbnail. Finally, dip it in the consomme and take a bite and... Damn, that's tasty. The added crunch from that tostada really does make this something special. Shout out to all my Patreon patrons and channel members for helping me pay the bills every month. Now do me a favor and hit those buttons down below to tell YouTube you like me. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna stand right here and eat this whole thing and then go play more Hollow Knight.